bow your heads with me this morning as we pray. As bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies and your grace. Thank you, Lord, for, uh, for the gospel commission that you have given to us and for the opportunity that you have given to the seniors to go on a mission for you. Lord, I pray that as we dedicate the seniors uh, for their mission project, we pray, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit will fill them. Lord, I pray that as uh, I share a thought with them, that you will speak directly to each of their hearts. Lord, I ask that you will, you will bless them, that you will bless the teachers that are going with them. And I pray, dear Lord, for your, your Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> in order to be an uh, effective missionary, or in order to be effective missionaries, one has to be prepared. One has to be what? Prepared and equipped. In other words, it is in the water, not on the land, that men learn to swim. In short, local mission activities and efforts, such as sharing the love of Christ with friends and family at home, and in school through your daily interactions and performance of daily duties, visiting the nursing home, bell choir trips, small choir trips, pathways, mission outreach, projects, community services, days, local church involvement such as participating in teaching and superintending Sabbath school, or even church work bees. In short, mission activities in the home, school, and at the church level are some of the ways that you seniors have been learning to swim, preparatory to diving into the ocean of the wider field of ministry, both at, both, both at home here in the United States and abroad. As you go forth, you will be doing two simple things. One, you will be speaking and sharing, number two, deeds. In other words, you'll be sharing words and deeds. But are these the ends the end, are these the end or the means to an end? This morning, I would like to challenge you to see your mission project as the means through which charity or love will flow from wells of life to thirsty souls. Secondly, I want to remind you to make a real impact, not by the things that you do, but by the amount of love with which you do what you are going to do. Thirdly, do your best, but remember, when everything else fails, love never fails. Turn your Bibles with me, if you have them, to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, reading from verses 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, reading from verses 1 to 3. And it reads, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not charity, I am become as a what? as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Verse 2 says, And though I have the gift of prophecy 
Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am what? I'm nothing. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity, it profiteth me what? Nothing. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 to 3 summarizes mission into two categories, words and deeds. Verse 3 mentions knowledge and faith. Mentions what? Knowledge and faith. Both words and deeds are conveyors or vessels from which knowledge is passed on from one individual to the other. So in short, 1 Corinthians 1 to 3 talks about knowledge and faith sang sandwiched between two slices of bread, words and deeds. In other words, what you say and do as a missionary will convey what you know and the faith that you have in God. When the disciples of Christ on the day of Pentecost spoke in tongues, when the new church sold all that they had and began to share all their goods with everyone in need, they were sharing the prophecies, the knowledge that they had, uh, that were filled, they were, they were sharing the prophecies and the mysteries that Christ unfolded to them, mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and they were filled with a faith that moved mountains. In order to do mission, you have to have faith. Going to hot springs, going to India, you need that faith that will move mount mountains, that simple trust in God. The few feeble disciples were filled with a strange energy and determination and began to, began to turn the world upside down in spite of numerous obstacles before them and the shameful failures behind them. Their faith was unshakable. Their knowledge was irrefutable. It could not be proven false because they had the truth. They were taught by Jesus Christ himself. Through knowledge, they persuaded Jews and enlightened Gentiles. By faith, they overcame obstacles such as sickness, imprisonment, threats, beatings, serpents, storms, riots, betrayals, prejudice, poverty, and the greatest enemy they overcame was self. Paul the missionary, an apostle to the Gentiles, gave a list of difficulties through which he persevered. And if you read his writings, you will see he persevered through many difficulties. All of the disciples had the greatest knowledge and exercised the greatest faith, mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, through the gift of tongues, they shared the knowledge of prophecy and unfolded mysteries, mysteries and with deeds of kindness and sometimes by giving up their own lives as martyrs to be crucified, beaten, stoned, and if needed, burnt, they revealed a faith that moved mountains. Like these Bible characters, you seniors will be embarking on a mission of faith. A mission of what? Sharing accumulated knowledge from books and from your daily past experiences. Yet all of these things are only a means to an end. What is that end or the path to the purpose? First, first Corinthians chapter one to one, first Corinthians chapter 13, one to three says, "It is love. Your purpose on your mission project, seniors and, and, and staff going with seniors, your project is not to preach. Primarily, is not to preach, is not to teach, is not to sing, is not just to pray, it is to love. Like these Bible characters, you will be embarking on a mission of faith. I mentioned it before. In order to share love, however, you need to have love. You need to what? Have love. Through your many years here at OH, OHA, and even within the past several weeks, you have seen and heard and experienced the love of God through the messages of hope in countless experiences, time and time again, when God gave you second chances. 
When God gave you second chances, when God gave you power and victory over temptations, strength in time of weakness, and a hope in times of hopelessness. You have received healing in times of sickness, forgiveness in times of failure, comfort in times of loneliness, charity, clarity in moments of confusion, joy in times of sadness. Having experienced this love, it should become like a well of water springing up inside of you so that it will overflow to others wherever you go. In other words, you are to share from your overflow. Now, after preaching many sermons, some of which will be translated, doing deeds of kindness to others, enduring jet lag, strange food, physical inconveniences and discomforts, being ex, uh, exposed to possible illness and even life-threatening diseases. If you have not loved, the Bible says, you will be, going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13, verse 1 to 3, you will be a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. You will be nothing. You will be missionaries that profited nothing. In other words, you would have made a lot of strange noises and gained nothing. Therefore, why should you have to worry up so much about everything that you have to do or will do or might happen, etc.? What you sh should be uppermost in your mind is, Lord, fill me with your love. God is less concerned with what you do and is more concerned about the amount of love with which you do even the smallest task. Whether you are in hot springs, whether you are in India, whatever you do, whatever you say, wherever you go, it should be filled with the love of God. You may even make mistakes. You may even uh, start your evangelistic efforts and things are not going the way that you think it should go. You may think you're not being able to connect with the people or things are not going perfectly as you planned. But if you were loving people, it will never fail. Amen? In India, conventional evangelistic methods have not worked well for evangelism. Therefore, Two methods have been used which have been most effective. Number one, number one, building schools. Number two, digging community wells. Since 2018, 43 communities th uh, through Maranatha Ministry have benefited from wells. Churches or schools without wells oftentimes have to source water from distant sources, contaminated streams, ponds and rivers, or reluctant neighbors at the risk of harm or abuse. A well located at a church or school not only provides clean and healthy water, but also a sense of security and safety, especially for, for, for the vulnerable, especially for men, sorry, especially for women and children. Jesus said the following words to the woman at the well. He said in John chapter 14, verse 13, he said, 13 and verse, uh, John chapter 4, sorry, <clears throat> verses 3, 13 and 14, Jesus said to the woman at the well, uh, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whosoever, whoever drinks the water I will give them, the water I will give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Then, in verse 15, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus made a real impact, seniors. Jesus made a real impact in the life of this woman by using an unconventional evangelistic method, provi by providing water to a Samaritan woman 
but it worked. She understood his words and was transformed by his unprejudiced, unconventional deed of love. Whether you are going to India or whether you are going to seek for souls in hot springs or wherever you are going, there is a spring or fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. There are many thirsty souls desperately in need of water, and they can only be quenched from the well of water welling up in you into eternal life. So what is that water according to the Bible? John chapter 7 verse 37 to 39 expands on this. On the last day, that, of that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirst, if anyone what? Let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. 1 Peter 1, verse 22, 23, since you have says, if you since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. <clears throat> The imagery of God's word also includes the idea of cleansing power. It is likened to water because water cleanses. Psalm 119 verse 9 shows, How can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to the word of God? Jesus adds in John chapter 15 and verse 3, You are already cl clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Paul says in Ephesians 5 verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse the church with the washing of the water by the word. References feeding into Jesus' teaching in John chapter 3 and verse 5 shows that the water he refers to includes all three figures that it quenches a person's thirst, facilitates his spiritual birth, cleanses him from his spiritual filth, Jesus' reference to water in John chapter 3, verse 5 should be understood as closely attached to the Spirit. And as mentioned in 1 Peter 1, verse 2 to 3, the Spirit causes the believer to love fervently with a pure heart. In other words, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of what? The Spirit of truth and the Spirit of love. He brings the love of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 into the heart of the missionary, and as the missionary goes, the missionary goes with what? The love of the Spirit in their heart. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 says, Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. But love never fails. Verse 13 says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Colossians 3 verse 17 says, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the words and the deeds as conveyors of what? Knowledge and faith. Colossians 3 verse 70 says, whatsoever you do, in word or deed, conveying your faith and your knowledge of Jesus Christ, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. In other words, do it out of a heart of pure and sincere love. In closing, you are going to the mission field to share love through words and deeds. You are not just loving people, but sharing your love with God. The book education in the chapter, um, 
the, in the chapter um, that talks about your life work, uh, forgive me, I, I don't remember the name of the chapter. Life work. Life work. In the chapter life work. Yeah. Notes that one motivation often forgotten for, 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 for preaching or sharing the gospel uh, is, is, is to end the suffering of God. The Bible notes that in all our afflictions, he is afflicted. Every pain, every sorrow felt by every member of the human family pains the heart of God. Not only man, as well as the planet Earth, is groaning for pain, but God himself is suffering for all the sin that throbs through this planet. Diseases, disasters, death, sin, and all of its pain and woe and degradation brings tears and hurt to God, so much so that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit groans with utterances that we could not even understand for the depth of woe that we cannot even comprehend. You will make a worthwhile impact on your life and on the life of others and even to the experience of God himself through love. Then you will succeed in your mission because God, because of God's love. But remember, you can only share from your overflow. So fill your heart and mind with God's love through, throughout your mission. It is through this love with which God so loved the world that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world and then shall the end come. Are you tired of suffering? Are you tired of sin? Of seeing people suffer over and over again and it's not getting better. It's getting worse. In the end, as the night of sin thickens and the light of God's love, the light of God's love will, will brighten the world with rays of hope, Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine for thy light is, has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Whether in hot springs or in India, you have a well that quenches spiritual thirst, provides new life, and cleanses. That well is the Holy Spirit. That well is who? The Holy Spirit that fills the heart with the water of pure, fervent love. Therefore, I want to encourage you before you go on your journey, surrender your hearts and plans to the Holy Spirit. This is your chance to help bring this world and sin to an end and to end the suffering of God. Through the Holy Spirit and His love, you will never have to be afraid. You will never fail. Plans may fail. Vehicles will, will fail. PowerPoints will fail. Your health will fail. The weather, it will fail. Your voice may even fail. And even you will fail. But love, oh no, it will never fail. When the storm was raging and the disciples were worried sick, Jesus rested calmly in his Father's love. Seniors, as you go, I want you to fix your eyes on Jesus, the greatest missionary. I leave you with the last statement. Seniors, rest in God's love, just like Jesus. Share God's love, just like Jesus. And finally, seniors, go in God's love. At this time, we're going to invite the seniors to come forward. And uh, everyone who is willing and able to uh, just gather around them, and we're going to have a prayer of dedication. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. 
We thank you, Lord, that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son so that no one can perish if they are willing to be saved. Lord, we thank you for, for empowering the seniors so that they can go on a mission for you. Lord, I pray that as they go, that you will fill them with your love. I pray that you will fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Fill them with your words. Fill them with the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the comfort of your promises. I pray, dear Lord, that you will help them, that their focus will be on Jesus that their focus will not so much be on their deeds and on their words, but that their focus will be on the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, love never fails, and so, Lord, we know that their mission will never fail. And so, Lord, I pray that you will give them this confidence, give them this sense of purpose, give them this highest aim, which is, to preach this everlasting gospel of the love of Jesus in, in everything that they do. Lord, uh, 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 I, I pray that all that they have learned and all that they have experienced, that in all of these experiences, in all that they have learned, that they will remember the moments when you reached out and touched their hearts. Remember, help them to remember those, 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 those moments, Lord, when you had mercy upon them, when you had compassion upon them. As they go and as they meet and interact with people, I pray that the same compassion, the same love, the same mercy, the same healing power of love will flow from them to suffering individuals. Lord, there are also individuals who, who Lord, they are at the anesthetic stage of their leprous condition of sin. They have no feelings. And so, Lord, I pray that as the seniors interact with them, that they will awaken, the Spirit of God will awaken in the lives of these individuals a sense of their need. Lord, as they see the way that they interact, as they see it in their smiles, as they see it in their touch, as they see it just in the way that they are united and just a sincere true, earnest, pure, simple love that flows through them, that, that, that they will see Jesus and they will want to give their lives to him. Amen. Lord, I give the seniors to you this morning. They are your children. You have preserved them. You have watered them. You have fed them. You have helped them. Now it is their time to go and to help others and to share the love that you have poured out upon them. Father, give them confidence. Help them not to look at them, themselves, their sins, their failures, their past, not even their strength, but to look at the power of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. I pray for the riddles that as they go with the seniors that you will give them peace. Lord, I know that you're going to open doors. I know that you are going to work miracles so they don't have to worry about anything. I commit their health into your hands. I commit their, their everything that they will do, everything that they will say into your hands, Lord. And I pray that this mission trip will, will make an impact, not because of them, but because of the love of the Spirit. In the end, Lord, I pray that the seniors will give you all the praise, that they will give you all the honor, that they will give you all the glory, because only you are worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing with them on this mission trip. Lord, as they go in your love, bless them, Lord, and bless the people that they will share this gospel with. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for the seniors. We thank you for blessing them. We thank you for loving them. We thank you for sending them. And we pray these, pray these things in no other name than in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Gospel of the kingdom
shall be preached in all the world. Our witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, every kindred, tongue, and people. For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Thanks for joining us for our prayer meeting. Feel free to continue praying wherever you may be, because we believe that prayer changes things. If you've been blessed by our program, why not leave a special prayer request or praise report in the comments below, and we'll be sure to share it with our prayer team. May God be with you.